every day for 10 days, I'm giving you something you can do to kickstart your students' sense of numbers and increase their fluency with mathematics. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. Over the two weeks of this kickstart, I'm giving you an action step each day that you can take towards building your students' number sense and increasing their fluency with mathematics. Now remember, this does not mean your students will magically have number sense and fluency by the end of the two weeks, but we're going to kickstart it and we'll give you a roadmap to keep building it throughout this school year. This is day seven of our kickstart. Make sure you are signed up to get all the kickstart resources at buildmathminds.com slash 10 day dash kickstart. So far in this kickstart, I'm going to be honest with you, we've looked at a lot of ideas that will help your students' mathematical understanding, but up till this point, they've all been theoretical ideas. Like, this would be great to do in your classroom, but Christina, how do we actually do that? Okay, so some of the ideas that we've focused on are making sure we focus on understanding, determining what underlying number concepts your students need to know. Make sure that you're recording students' understanding. Stop talking and start listening. Add in visuals. And then yesterday we talked about combining concrete, representational, and abstract. If you've missed any of those, go back and listen to the previous days of the Kickstart so you have that base understanding of what we're trying to work towards. Today is day seven, and the next few daily tips in the Kickstart are going to be those practical things to do in your classroom about all the ways that you can incorporate the things that we've talked about so far. Our first practical teaching tip is one of my all-time favorite math activities, number routines. Yep, I want you to take five or 10 minutes tomorrow to do a number routine with your class. Now inside the Build Math Minds PD site that I run for elementary educators, I compiled all the number routines that we have information about inside the site. And there are over 40 of them. So I can't go into all of them, but for today, I'd like to share a general description of number routines, why they're so important, and a couple of my favorite routines, along with a few guidelines for using them. After you listen, your action step is to just pick one number routine and try it out in your classroom. If you've done number routines before, Go search a little and try to pick a new one to try with your students. Number routines are structured, repetitive activities that engage students in meaningful mathematical thinking. They are typically done whole group and should take just five or 10 minutes of your classroom time. Number routines play a pivotal role in developing those eight number sense concepts we talked about back in day two. It creates opportunities for students to engage with numbers in various ways and develop a deep understanding of mathematical concepts and are not just focused on the doing of math, but the understanding. Number routines are designed with students at the center. Students are sharing their thinking, so it's a great way for you to talk less and listen more, and it gives you time to record what you are hearing your students say about their number sense. Number routines are often visual in nature, but they can be just the abstract symbols. If so, look to see if you including those visuals would help your students do the routine a little bit easier. And as we talked about in yesterday's tip, combining the concrete representational and abstract models helps kids make connections. So in a number routine, kids are typically not writing anything down. You're the one who will be. So as much as you can, try to combine CRA so that your students see examples of it as much as possible. And of course, it helps your students make those connections that they might not have. Number routines gives you an opportunity to discuss underlying number sense ideas that might hinder your students' ability to work the math that is the main part of your lesson for that day. So as we talked about on day two, 
look at your lesson for tomorrow to see what number sense ideas your students could benefit from for the lesson to make a bit more sense to them and see if you could do a number routine that brings out, brings out those number sense concepts. If you are new to number routines, I think the best place to start is with the routine notice and wonder. You will actually use this routine in so many of the other routines. Annie Fetter is the expert on this. If you are a member of the Build Math Minds PD site, you can watch her virtual math summit session all about notice and wonder. For non-members, I'll link up one of her blog posts on the Kickstart resources page that's been emailed to you if you're registered for the Kickstart. The basic premise is to put up a visual image or collection of problems, and then ask the students to think and write down what they notice and what they wonder. Then you have them share and spend some time investigating some of their noticings and wonderings. Asking students to first notice and wonder about tasks gets them to think beyond answer getting. Mathematicians don't solve every addition problem the same way every single time. First, they look at the context of the problem and the numbers in the problem. They notice things. And then they start to think about the best solution path. They wonder. In school math, we often don't give students that opportunity. We give them the solution path, then show them how to solve a few problems with that solution path, then ask them to practice it. There is no noticing and wondering. There is a lot more to notice and wonder than I'm giving in this little short introduction. So over on the Kickstart Research page, I'll link up the information that has been curated by the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics about notice and wonder including some short little videos they created that detail how to use it in your classroom. If you'd like to see Notice and Wonder in a classroom, the teaching channel has a great video that I'll link up as well. An important thing that Annie Fetter said in her virtual Mass Summit session is, one thing to remember is that you're trying to figure out everything that's in their heads rather than putting anything in their heads. You are listening to what they say rather than listening for the right answers. Now, I believe that is true for all number routines you do with your students. Number routines are a time for you to listen to your students, not teach at your students. One more routine I'd like you to consider using if you don't already is number strings. A number string is a series of problems or visuals that are related in some way. You present one problem or visual at a time and the focus of discussion is on how the problems relate to the previous ones and your student's thinking process along the way. So an example might look like this. You would put nine plus five up, and then you spend a little bit of time talking about how they solve the, that problem. Then maybe nine plus seven, and then 19 plus 28, then maybe 354 plus 298. And you can even extend it further into something like, 4,998 plus 2,014. And then maybe one where you have to think about a larger amount to move around, 2,989 plus 465. This number string could be used in a classroom that is working on multi-digit addition, but the number string helps bring out some relationships with the numbers that we want kids to pay attention to even when working with large quantities. The way they think about and solve nine plus five can be the same as how they solve 4,998 plus 2,014. But as I said, number strings don't have to be abstract symbols and they might not even relate to the lesson you're doing that day. Sometimes you just wanna work on building their number sense or practicing something that may, they've already learned but they're kind of struggling with. Here's an example of a visual number string for multiplication facts. Now remember, you don't show this all at once. For those of you listening to the audio, I'm showing a visual of 10 groups of four inside of a 10 frame, and then under it, it shows nine groups of four. Next to that, it shows 10 groups of three, then nine groups of three. And the last visual shows 10 groups of six, then nine groups of six. The idea here is we want to help kids see how nine groups of something relates to having 10 groups of something because multiplying by 10 is way easier than multiplying by nine. And if kids know their times tens, then that can help them with their times nines. So with number strings, you can present one problem or visual at a time. 
And the focus of discussion is on how the problems relate to the previous problems and their thinking process along the way. Typically, you'll have a helper problem like the nine plus seven or showing the 10 groups first that helps students use stuff they already know to figure out something they don't know. If I had just jumped straight to 2,989 plus 465, a lot of the students would not have been thinking about making the 2,989 a friendly number like 3,000. But because you discuss making a friendly number on the problems that lead up to it, your students are more likely to use a strategy than just giving them the problem without those helper problems. So again, the day seven tip is to take five or 10 minutes tomorrow to do a number routine with your class. It could be one of the two I talked about here or just Google number routines and you will find a ton. For those of you who have taken the flexibility formula, I give you my three main experiences kids need to have with mathematics and one of them is number routines. Inside that course, you have a more in-depth video about number routines along with access to Google Slides with pre-made number strings for you to use because those are my favorite. If you are taking part in this Kickstarter, we do have a special thing for you to receive a gift from us when you enroll in the Flexibility Formula cor course. The details are in the Kickstart checklist, so go check that out if you're thinking about taking the course. Like everything that you try, I want you to remember that this is new. It might not go as wonderfully as you planned. At a past virtual math summit, Teresa Wills reminded us of this quote. Try a thing you haven't done three times. Once to get over the fear of doing it, twice to learn how to do it, and a third time to figure out whether or not you like it. I think I just messed that up. And a third time to figure out whether you like it or not. I better get the quote right. Ver and that was quoted to Virgin Thomas. So try out a number routine tomorrow, but make sure to do it three times. While you do the routines, be mindful of trying to do the things we've talked about so far in this kickstart. Focus on understanding, determine what underlying concepts your students need to know, record your students' thinking and understanding along the way, stop talking and start listening, make sure you're adding in visuals and try to combine the CRA as much as possible. This has been day seven of our kickstart. And remember, there are nine other days of tips to help you start the year off with a solid mathematical foundation for your students. So if you have not officially joined us yet for this 10 day number sense kickstart, go to buildmathminds.com slash 10 day dash kickstart to sign up. I'll email you the kickstart checklist and the link to the resources page, which has all the links to the resources I mentioned in this episode. That is all for day seven, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for day eight.